I am so glad you are here at Steamboat Kids. We have all had a lot of fun so far at our block party. We've gotten to know each other really well, and you've done a great job at showing friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. It's really important for us to encourage our friends, which is something that we just might learn in today's Bible story. But before we get into it, let's take some time to see what Kyle and Ryle are up to. Man, I'm so nervous, man. I have this dance recital and it's coming up and I just don't, I don't think I can do it. Wait, I can't. No, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I am so, I just don't know what to do. Man, this dance recital, I just don't, I really don't think I have the skills to do it. I don't, I can't do it. Yeah, that's it. I can't do it. Hey everyone, it's Tanya, and I'm so excited to be here today to tell you about one of my favorite words, encouragement. Encouragement can feel really good, right? Encouragement from a friend can get you pumped up when you're about to walk out on the field for a game or on stage for a recital. And encouragement from a friend can also help when you're going through something difficult. And we've all been going through some difficult times lately. In fact, in the Old Testament, we read about two friends who found out how important it is to encourage each other. Their names were Elijah and Elisha. We can find the story of Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament in the books of 1 Kings and 2 Kings. These books tell the stories about the kings who ruled over God's people, the Israelites, in the days after David was king. You remember King David, right? A few of these kings followed God, but unfortunately, most of them didn't. And since they didn't listen to God, guess what happens? Well, the kingdom didn't do so well, and it started to fall apart. But God loved his people. He loved the Israelites, and he cared about them so much that he sent prophets or people who spoke to everyone and shared God's words with them. Elijah was one of those prophets. So let's dive more into our Bible story and find out how Elijah met Elisha. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. For many years, God's people were ruled by kings who refused to listen to God. So God sent prophets to speak his words. One was a man named Elijah. I serve the Lord. Elijah did amazing things through God's power, like calling for rain after three years of drought and uh, bringing a dead boy back to life. But being a prophet was a lonely, difficult life. After the evil queen Jezebel threatened his life, Elijah fled to Mount Horeb. God, I've been committed to you, but the people have turned their backs on me. I am the only prophet left. God already had an answer to Elijah's pleas. A friend. Go back the way you came. Anoint Elisha from Abel Mehola as the next prophet after you. So Elijah tightened his belt and set out along the road. When he finally reached the town, he noticed several young men plowing with a dozen pair of oxen. And in the very last field, he noticed one of the young men struggling to keep his oxen in line. Get up there, Ham. Move along, Burger. God, is that Elisha? He's just a small town kid. What does he have? Does he have what it takes to be a prophet? But God had chosen Elisha, so Elijah tramped through the muddy field to greet the young man. Elisha. Elisha blinked in surprise when he saw the prophet. Whoa, Burger. Elijah marched right up to Elisha and threw his very own cloak over the young man's shoulders. It was a sign that God had chosen Elisha to be Elijah's assistant. Me? You're choosing me? Elijah turned and walked away. Elisha dropped the reins and ran after. Wait, just let me say goodbye to my family. Then I'll come with you. Go right ahead. I'm not making you do anything. Yes, sir. Right then and there, Elisha broke apart his plow and used the wooden pieces to start a fire. He cooked a meal 
and called all his family and friends over to share it with him. I'm leaving to travel with Elijah. Goodbye, everyone. Then Elisha set out on the road beside Elijah. I don't really know how to be a prophet, or, or even a prophet's assistant. That's okay. You'll learn. So over the years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere as a close companion and good friend, and he watched and listened intently as Elijah spoke God's words to powerful kings and, and did incredible things. One day, Elisha and Elijah left the town of Gilgal on the way to Bethel, and they both knew that God was about to do something very breathtaking. God was going to take Elijah up to heaven. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Elisha wasn't about to leave his friend to go it alone. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. At Bethel, the same thing happened. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. It happened once again in Jericho. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan River. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. You do realize you're repeating yourself. Together, Elisha and Elijah reached the banks of the Jordan River. The waters flowed dark and deep. Elijah removed his coat and rolled it up. And then he struck the river. Immediately, the waters parted to the right and left. Elisha and Elijah walked across the river on dry ground. They reached the opposite bank. Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Elisha didn't want to lose his friend and mentor, Elijah, but he'd learned many things in the last few years. Please, give me a double share of the spirit God has given you. Only the Lord can do that. But if you see me when I'm taken away, that means you will receive what you've asked for. Elisha nodded, and the two men walked on in silence. Suddenly, a wild wind whipped up, and a chariot and horses appeared blazing with fire. Elijah. The flaming chariot flew down right between the two men. It caught up Elijah and carried him up to heaven, driven by a strong wind. Elijah, you are like a father to me. Elisha stared into the sky until the last breath of wind and the final hint of flame were gone. Then in great sorrow, he tore his own clothes. My best friend is gone. Glancing down at the ground, he saw Elijah's coat. Carefully, he picked it up. I wonder. Elisha hurried back to the bank of the Jordan River. Again, the water flowed hard and fast. On the opposite bank, a group of prophets from Jericho watched. Look, there's Elisha. But where's Elijah? Across the river, Elisha twisted up Elijah's coat. He called out in a loud voice. Where is the power of the Lord? Where is the power of the God of Elijah? Then Elisha struck the water just as Elijah had done. And just like what happened before, the waters parted to the right and left. The prophets from Jericho stared in amazement as Elisha crossed the river on dry land. The spirit God gave to Elijah has been given to Elisha. It was true. Elisha had been faithful to follow and learn from Elijah for many years, and now God's spirit was with Elisha just as it had been with his friend. All right, so Elisha noticed that Elijah's coat was left behind. Elisha picked it up and hurried back to the Jordan River. He did exactly what Elijah had done before. He took the coat and he struck the water with it. The water parted and he was able to walk a dry land. A group of prophets from Jericho saw the amazing thing that Elisha was able to do. They saw that God's spirit was with Elisha in the same way it had been with Elijah. When we look at the friendship between Elijah and Elisha, we can see that they were always there for each other. They went through a lot together, but no matter what happened, they were there to encourage each other along the way. And that's what friends do, right? The bottom line is friends encourage one another, right? Hey, everyone, let's say it together. Friends encourage one another. All right, man. 
Man, I'm so worried about this dance recital. I just don't think I can do it. I can't. Hey, no. hey Ryle, chill out, man. It's hey, okay. Kyle. Just, just take a breath out. <sighs> Remember, God is with you. That's right. Even in, even when you dance, even when you sing, just relax. You're right. Relax, hey, hey, you keep, can do this. Wait, hey, keep on. Hey, keep on. Keep, yeah, keep, keep, keep going. I, I will okay. encourage you until you're ready, man. You're ready? right. All right, ready? Okay, with God, ready? all things are possible. You ready? Go. Go. I can do it! Ready. I can so do ready. it! Wow, Kyle and Ryle are such great friends. And you know, Elijah and Elijah were great friends too. They stuck together. They did what they knew God had planned for them to do. And they encouraged each other along the way. So do you remember what our bottom line was? Right, friends encourage one another. When we encourage our friends, we get to share God's love in a big way. You never know who might need kind words from you. So just take the time to say it. Maybe it's something like, hey, I know you can do this, or God is with you. Or maybe it's even something like, remember, I will always be your friend. The great news is, is we do not have to do this alone. Jesus promises that God would send a helper to us, and his helper was his Holy Spirit. When we believe and put our faith in Jesus, we get to have his spirit living inside of us. The Spirit will encourage us and give us the power to encourage other people too. There are so many ways that you can encourage someone. So use your imagination because you are creative. Maybe your friend is nervous about a tryout for a sport, or maybe she's nervous about a test coming up. You can encourage her by telling her that you believe in her, or you could just help her practice too. If you notice that one of your friends is upset, you don't have to let them do it alone. And you don't have to say anything. You could just sit with them and hang out with them and just let them know that you are there for them. No matter what, when we encourage our friends, it's a great way that we can treat others the way we want to be treated. So let's be encouragers and let's be there for one another. Let's find ways to encourage our friends and family this week. Oh, by the way, my friend Tanya did such a great job at sharing our Bible story today. I am so proud of her. Well, Steamboat Kids, we will see you next week.